Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa recently concluded long-running trade talks with the European Union, but is now preparing for a possible battle to save its U.S. market access benefits. Chair and Screamer joins me to discuss developments. Hi. Hi. South Africa and six other Southern African countries recently concluded decade-long negotiations with the EU. What are some of the highlights of that agreement? Well, the big highlight is that it's finally initialed. So the negotiators in Pretoria a couple of weeks ago initialed the final text of this uh, economic partnership agreement, which is, uh, as you mentioned, a very long-standing negotiation. Now, South Africa has had the Trade and Development Cooperation Agreement with the EU, which was negotiated in the late 1990s and was enforced from about 2004 which is a reciprocal agreement. So there was no compulsion on South Africa to actually negotiate a new deal. But <coughs> the rest of SACU, um, which is a, a unified um, trading bloc, um, its customs union, uh, had never been par party to the TDCA. And um, there also the European Union, um, under WTO rules, said they need to now negotiate reciprocal trade agreements. So we had the Lome and the Cotonou agreements. And that gave uh, African countries, uh, Caribbean and Pacific countries, duty-free um, and quota-free access into the European market. But that was a non-reciprocal arrangement. And the EU started uh, quite a few years, well, 10 years ago, trying to convert those into um, uh, free trade agreements or EPAs. And so it was really, uh, that was what was driving this uh, need from the uh, South African side to have a more common interface throughout SACU, as well as we've got Angola and Mozambique in the SADC group, and then uh, the European Union's needing to get the uh, reciprocal arrangement with these different countries, the ACP countries, as they're called. And there have been a few of these deals signed over the last few years. I think the Caribbean countries uh, signed very early, and this is one of the more recent that has now been signed. And I think the, the highlights there is that we've really tried to South Africa and um, is to get a bit better benefits than what we got under the, the old free trade agreement, the old TDCA. And it seems we have won some, uh, some uh, improved access on a few products, uh, mostly agricultural products, things like sugar, um, things like wines, um, <coughs> and then also bioethanol um, and, uh, some, and canned fruit and, and things like that. And, uh, but in return, um, uh, the Europe has now got a reciprocal arrangement with the SADC group. And interestingly, Mozambique has si is planning to sign uh, this agreement with uh, this EPA agreement. They don't need to, they're a least developed country. So they could continue to access Europe under everything but arms. And Angola looks like it's set to do that. But they've decided that they probably will sign uh, this agreement as Mozambique. Because I think they don't want to be in a situation where they have to go through um, a whole reciprocity agreement with the EU. They'd rather have certainty, long-term certainty. I think with the hope that they're going to graduate of, out of this least developed country status at some some point. So it's quite a technical uh, um, agreement. It's been uh, it, it went through phases of where it really broke down badly, and in the end, I think the European Parliament uh, put a line in the sand of. 1st of October of 2014, that all these EPAs need to, needed to be concluded. So we've met that deadline uh, as the SADC group, and it seems like more and more uh, groups will also be signing before that deadline. <coughs> and uh, what will happen now is that, that internally, the countries that are going to sign from SADC group will take this to their parliaments and uh, get these ratified, and that should take a few months. And then the Europeans, uh, likewise, they have to translate the agreement for all their members, and then they have to go through a legal process to get this uh, coming into force. So it's about a year from now we should have this new trade arrangement with the Europeans. South Africa's concession on geographical indication seems to have been key to securing the deal. Yes, that was the, the key that unlocked, you know, the, there was a deadlock uh, a, th a few years ago, and um, th there's, the EPA was just not going anywhere, the talks were, were just stalled. And uh, uh, for many, many years, the Europeans have been trying to put geographical indications on the agenda. These relate to products that uh, are from a specific region, uh, so they have that regional characteristic and a, a unique process. So we know things like champagne or uh, Vienna sausages or feta cheese. 
Uh, so those, come, those, those are geographical indicators, and the Europeans have been keen to safeguard those. <coughs> we go back to the TDCA negotiations where there was a big row over port and sherry, uh, which was uh, s uh, somewhat dealt with then. But this, this is the first major concession by South Africa on geographical indications. And it was an important thing because we got better trade access or better market access into the European Union as a result of the EPA. This was an important you know, quid pro quo from South Africa's side and SACU's side, but mostly from South Africa's side because uh, um, we've been resisting this for, for many years. And we become a, a group of only a handful of countries that now accept these GRs. So I think there's countries like Australia, Chile, ourselves, um, and a few countries in Asia that now accept GRs. And in return, we also, uh, you know, we, we, we also got our own GRs recognized by the European Union. The most well-known or uh, high-profile will be rooibos tea, honeybush, and karoo lamb. But we also, uh, in total, we had uh, uh, around 100 of these GRs recognized. Mostly, these are wines. And these wines are, are you know, uh, really they, they names of certain regions in the Cape where these wines are produced. And in return, we offered uh, a GI recognition around um, a number of products from Europe. I think it was about a, t over 250 products from Europe. And there's also a concession within the agreement to add additional GIs in future from the South African side. And it'll be interesting to see whether we exploit that opportunity or not. The Europeans see it as a important in terms of their agricultural policy. You know, they have a, a, a farming sector that's under competitive pressures all the time. And the, the ability to safeguard these names seems to give them a, a premium in the market and also gives them a, a opportunity. There's a sort of, there's a, it's, a, it's a, a high value product or valued by the consumer. And they are growth markets for the Europeans. Many of these names we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't readily recognize. But, uh, you know, things like champagne, feta cheese, we, we all do know. The next big trade issue facing South Africa is the extension of the Africa Growth and Opportunities Act by the U.S. Congress. Yes, so, that, so the, the focus now has to shift across the Atlantic to that deal. This one, we, we can't negotiate. Um, this is a unilaterally derived deal. It's an act that is passed by the U.S. Congress, as you say. It's also not one that the administration is in charge of, so it's not a Barack Obama. Uh, it's not within his purview to, to pass this act. He can recommend it to Congress, but Congress ultimately decides whether or not to extend the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA, which has been in place since the days of President Bill Clinton and has been very beneficial to Africa and South Africa in terms of our trade relations with the US. Uh, however, it's coming up for renewal, <coughs> and um, uh, 2015 is the key date. I think it's around uh, end of September, October, that, uh, um, the re that the act expires. So if it's not renewed, we'll, we'll revert to some other sort of relationship in terms of our trade reg regime, both South Africa and the rest of the qualifying African countries. Not every African country gets it because uh, the U.S. doesn't give it to governments, for instance, that they don't recognize as democratic. So the, the qualifying African countries could also lose this. The uh, President Obama administration has made it clear they would like to see an extension, possibly with some adjustments. South Africa, I think, would, would love to see an extension and put a, a suggestion of a 15-year extension, saying that it would give the certainty required to, for investors to um, take full advantage of the, the, the market access benefits that flow from a go. But there are voices, particularly from the agricultural sector uh, in, uh, in the US, which are concerned, not necessarily about the, the act being extended to the rest of Africa, but about whether South Africa is not mature enough to be graduated out of the benefits. And there was a letter written late last year by some of farming groups saying that South Africa you know, precludes um, some of their products, especially meat products around pork, around beef, around chicken, flowing from the US into South Africa. And they feel, therefore, it would be unfair to keep extending this access. On our side, we, we say we, we want a, a unified um, uh, uh, approach to trade with the US as a region to support regional integration. 
that there's a lot of goodwill that flows from Africa, which is a fast-growing uh, territory across the U.S. as a result of this AGOA um, benefit, and we would like to see it sustained. And the, the other argument is that it also it helps sustain U.S. jobs, um, that it also is a fairly balanced relationship between South Africa and the U.S. If you look at our trade exports and imports, it is fairly balanced at the moment. And it's still a growing relationship. So we've seen a decline, for instance, in the case of our trade with Europe, whereas with the U.S. it has, post the uh, Great Recession, has started to recover. And it's, uh, it's fairly balanced on either side. So we're going to make a strong case for sustaining it and for keeping South Africa in it to keep this common interface between this giant U.S. market and Africa, rather than having different uh, approaches for some countries in Africa versus others. And uh, there's going to be this big gathering that uh, President Obama has called of African leaders in the coming days. <coughs> and that's, it's going to feature highly on that agenda. Uh, and there's going to be the, uh, the, the annual Go Forum will take place on the margins of this big meeting that's taking place. But it's really coming to crunch time now. And we know that the U.S. Is a, has a fairly divided uh, Congress and uh, pol uh, parliamentary or politics generally in the U.S. Is, is quite robust. And it's going to be interesting to see whether our message is going to fly or whether it's going to sink. And I think uh, what we're going to have to be doing is not so much talking to the administration where I think we're pushing on an open door, but I think being knocking on those doors of those congressmen and those senators that have power over, over this vote and really make our case for the extension of a go for a sustained period. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.